Hey, I'm Anfa. Today I'm doing a review of the Ploopy headphones. I've made a short about them before, but that's not a review, and I, I really wanted to give them a review. I think they deserve a review from me. Let's go. Now, I've written a lengthy script, but I have no time to actually read it out correctly from memory. So I think I want to just use it as notes and talk from the top of my head instead. Sorry. All right, so I've been to Sonoy 2023, and that was in October. I've brought the headphones there. I've made a presentation about them, and I also let people try them out. And I've heard a good thing, things from people. Uh, they really like the experience. Uh, people were testing these headphones there. Mm, I showed everything I knew back then. But I've learned a thing or two extra since then. So if you've seen that video, um, you will learn more. And if you haven't seen it, I, I will probably link it in the description. If not, poke me in the comments and I will do it. Right, so what the heck is this? First question. Well, these are headphones. Uh, so-called Ploopy headphones. Ploopy is a company made by two Canadian people and they make cool things. Uh, they make open hardware. I believe they started with keyboards and mice and trackballs and stuff and all of their stuff is open source and open hardware so you can like take the production files and manufacture your own units. Or you can buy stuff from them and then customize it because you can like 3D print custom parts or something because you have the files. I don't have a 3D printer. I have not tested that, but well, people exist who did. Yeah, so I've been using these headphones on and off for like half an hour now. Half a year. On and off because I had a little bit of issue with pipe wire. I had an issue where pipe wire would not detect them and like some time later, I realized, well, the the, the solution was to just uh, restart pipe wire <laughs> and that's it. And then they were detected fine. But I still was using them on Windows. So I've been using them on Windows at work um, for sound design, among other things, but also just for consuming media and playing games. Uh, I've been using them on Linux. Actually, I've been more using them on Linux for playing games than on Windows. Uh, but yeah, I've been listening to music. I've been making my own music. Uh, I've been talking to the developers about these headphones on the Discord uh, of their company, which is open, and they answered all my questions. And they gave me explicit permission to quote them on things they wrote on Discord, which is nice. I don't think I'm going to use it, though, because I just don't have the time. And I really wanted to bring you this review. So, yeah. I also learned about various challenges that design of the headphones brought and like what are the limitations of them. I've had some issues and I fixed them. Um, I found a single big issue with these headphones. And I'm going to explain what it is, what are the consequences and why it's not a deal breaker for me, but maybe it will be for you. It entirely depends on what you want to do with these headphones. So they are 3D printed. Uh, they are they are open back over ear headphones with planar magnetic drivers. Planar drivers means that there is a little plane with a coil that is planar, it's not a circular coil, and there are there is a planar mass, like planar planar magnet. It's like a a couple bars uh, of neodymium magnets like stuck together, which form like a magnetic plane, and the planar driver responds to that. So this is called planar magnetic drivers, magnet planar mag magnetoacoustic drivers i don't know planar headphones that's that's like that's a big uh, the big word and i'm told these are very expensive in the wild 
So, uh, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. My notes, uh, I've put some a specific order of re releasing all of that information to you, which was expected to like build some tension and stuff. So I'm going to try to keep that. Also, I think I'm going to publish this, my, this script of mine, so you can just read it and also control F and find stuff. Um, I'm going to put a link and you also can appreciate my awesome um, writing and how the video did not turn at all like the script. <clears throat> so, oh, a big disclaimer. I mark this video as sponsored. And what that means is I've been compensated to make this video. I've been compensated how? I got the headphones for free. I still had to pay customs so I could receive them. And yeah, that's it. Uh, Ploopy told me that hey if you want would you want to make a video about our about our headphones and i said yeah sure and they said okay we can send you a pair for free and i'm like cool and that was pretty much it i made the short video and i promised them i'm going to do a longer one they didn't ask for two videos i just wanted to do a longer one a proper review but i never found the energy and space time to do it so now i'm doing it regardless i'm like i'm going to I'm gonna do whatever I can and I'm gonna publish it because heck, these headphones deserve it. Also, Ploopy deserves it as well, and the community very much deserves to know more about these headphones because I think they're worth thinking about, checking out, buying, using, hacking. I don't know. So, this video is sponsored, as in the headphones were sponsored to me. Nothing else was. Uh, Ploopy isn't paying me or telling me what to say, or they don't really have any influence over me. They just answered my questions, and, and that was it. <clears throat> okay, so... Let's take a look at my journey. First thing is... Assembly. So I received a pre-assembled pair of Ploopy headphones. Uh, in the color red, which is what you see on the... Is it is it what you see on the page? No, I think they show black. Or maybe something else. On their Discord, the red headphones are the, the icon of the, of the server. That's what I thought, yeah. So, yeah, and with a standard headband size. The pair arrived in a box, in a bag, in pieces. You might be wondering, like, how is this assembled? Well, there's also a kit you can assemble from scratch, and in that kit you solder things together. And I... I don't have skills to do that. I tried to move a zero ohm resistor, an SMD zero ohm resistor, and I ended up losing it in a blob of solder and then replacing it with another blob of solder, so I guess that it works. Uh, but I would not want to touch anything of higher complexity uh, with a... with my iron. Big iron! So I can, I can see like how getting the unassembled kit it can be a lot of fun, you know, putting this all together um, the circuit board and you know oh crap but um well that's too much for me and i also i wanted to make sure the headphones like are representative of the quality that bloopy provides and if i built them myself from their parts i could mess something up and then i would complain that hey, they sound bad and it would turn out that it was just me doing a shit job at assembling them so I skipped that skip. I so I I, sk I skipped that that issue and just asked them to send me a pre-assembled pair. Holy crap! I'm spending a lot of time talking about this. It's not really important. Right. So in my case, putting them together was just taking the driver assemblies and sliding them into the headband, clicking them in, just like tweaking the size of that. Connecting the cables together, connecting that to the DAC, 
and then the DAC to the computer, and that was it. They show up as a uh, USB audio device, standard USB audio, nothing weird about them. Yeah, you have volume control, and that's it. <clears throat> or rather, it would be, but this is not an ordinary pair of headphones. <clears throat> Sorry. So you not only can like 3D print your own parts if you want, but you can also reprogram the the custom DAC or digital to audio convert to digital anal to analog converter. Um, there's like the the box little box. Um, let me grab it. Just set up with my microphone here is really not super extra orderly. Gonna make some nasty sounds. Right, so we have this thing. This is the DAC. And um, what sits in here is a Raspberry Pi microcontroller chip, which is overclocked, by the way. And it processes the audio, it processes the, equal the equalizer that is in here. And there is an open source program called Ploopy Headphones Toolbox, which you can run and configure that equalizer and also other parameters of this device, which is really cool because you can, like, you can really mess with the sound of these headphones and you can also make presets and easily switch between them. There is supposedly an option to save your preset to the headphones so they don't like reset when you reconnect them. I haven't had luck with that, or maybe I was using some other version of the software that doesn't support the saving. I don't know. Sorry, my chair is squeaking and creaking. I'm just constantly making noises. I hope it's not coming through on the mic. I should have made this as a live stream, really, and the, the quality of what I'm doing would be excusable, but it, no, it isn't. Um, yeah, so they come with this DAC and and a nice USB-C cable as well. Uh, let's go on with my notes. Ergonomics. Yeah, let's talk about the comfort. So these headphones, I find very comfortable. They don't weigh and nothing. I'm, they weigh something. They have, they have a bit of heft, but they're like they are clamping force is by default very light. So if I like start shaking my head, you can see how they are like bouncing around. Yeah, like this is not something I normally do. So like it's really not an issue. But the low clamping force for me especially is a blessing. Especially since I started wearing uh, glasses and, you know, wearing other headphones, I found that, like, for example, the... Let me pick another headphones I'm using regularly. If I put on a pair of HyperX Cloud 2, which do clamp quite a bit, after sitting a whole day in them, I I feel like the, the the glasses are like pressed into my skull and I just get a headache. So that's not very good. And because the the cloud HyperX cloud is just pushing the, you know, my glasses frame into my head and that hurts over the long term. But loopies are so light in clamping that they don't do that. They sit comfortably over over my ears and over the glasses as well and like they're not falling out they're not falling off unless i do something really violent and just you know try to drop them which is very possible but if i don't want them to fall off they won't fall off like if you just keep a little bit of awareness that you need to like pres uh, keep a little bit of um Inertia, like low pass filter, your velocity function, and you're good to go, and the headphones are gonna drop. Yeah, I can sometimes forget I'm wearing them. Especially since they are open back 
and they barely block any sound from the outside. Which is great and terrible. I mean, it, it's what it is. It's great because... Um, I can, like, still talk to people without taking my headphones off, which is cool. I can just, you know, turn down the volume or mute something and I can talk to them immediately. I don't need to put down the headphones. Also, I think... I, I suppose the openness um, affects the, the sound quality as well. But... Yeah, the, of course, the downside is you need a quiet listening environment or you're not going to be happy. You can't use them, you know, uh, in a subway or, you know, in a car because you won't hear much. But they are not really meant to be carried around to think. But I'm going to get to that in a moment. Yeah, uh, so that's ergonomic. Um, ah, also, they came with two alternative sets of headband springs. So, uh, I would need to somehow take this apart, but <laughs> there are two 3D printed springs in here, and I could take this headband apart and replace those springs to get a harder clamping force. I haven't changed them. I don't really know how. <laughs> Didn't want to break anything. And the default clamping force is just fine. But there are, you know, four springs, two of each size, like, because, you know, symmetric, and you can place them, which is really cool. This 3D printed springs, like, it's crazy. Uh, by the way, the build quality of these headphones like feels really solid. They're not super heavy, but the plastic is also like... They don't feel plasticky, really. They, they're... they're not really squeaking like a plastic thing. Just... yeah. I don't know. They're not clacky, clackety clack. They have a little bit of heft. I really like the, I, I really like the mechanical design of them, and also like the the ports from this from the front. The, at first, I thought like that's really weird. Why aren't the ports facing downwards? This makes a lot of sense. Well, first, if they were facing downwards, um, it would be super easy to just pull the plugs off. Uh, but because they are pointing forward, I've never had this problem that I just you know accidentally pulled them out. Mm. But it also makes that the cables are sticking a little bit taller away from you. So they are a little bit less likely to just, you know, collide with your with your clothing. Maybe it's minor, but I think it's a it's a it's a good design choice. Um, all right, let's talk about customizability. Customizability. So these headphones are, as I said, open hardware. You can find the, the production files and print your own parts. You can also modify the firmware that runs on the DAC. You can reprogram this thing to do whatever you want. Um, I mean, you don't want to blow your ears. That's one thing you don't want. Um, but you can customize that. I, I really want to see someone um, 3D print these with extra places for like RGB LEDs and you know wiring them around and I don't know, maybe maybe adding some chip or something maybe in the headband uh, that would like you know maybe leech of the the audio signal and drive the LEDs to the music and you know have them in like semi clear plastic and that would be really cool I mean you can't do anything like that with any other <laughs> headphones. You can't do this with Ploopies. If you have a 3D printer, a tinkerer mind, and a crazy imagination, you can do that. And I want to see it if you do. So please share that. Right. Sorry for clicking the mic. Yeah, this really should have been a live stream. I just, yeah. I wanted to get a decent video fidelity, so I'm going to upload this in 4K. I also have some B roll. 
that I'm going to try and and put insert here and there so you can see some cool footage I shot when I was unboxing them originally, putting them together, um, and yeah, also like doing some beauty shots with lights and stuff. Okay, so that's about the customizability. Aesthetics. Well, aesthetics are highly subjective. I think I like them. I like the skeletonized look. At first, I thought they kind of looked silly when you put them on because they're so large. But that notion got away. I'm, I'm no longer feeling this way. I like this design. I like how they designed, for example, the inner part here. You see that? This little pattern? I really like that. They have also uh, tuned resonators in this chassis that are made to uh, tone down a resonant frequency of them. Uh, I think that's... I think I've written that in my script a little bit farther down the road. Oh no, I did! I did mention that in here. Okay, aesthetics. Right. Let's talk about portability now. So, these headphones are not meant to be carried around. Uh, they are not meant to be used during commutes, uh, on the go. Not really. Uh, they are best suited to using them in your studio or at home. You know, when you want to, I don't know, uh, close your eyes, lay on a couch and enjoy your music or sit in a chair or sit in, in, in a sofa or whatever. Or you want to use them to make music or enjoy music as you work or yeah, they're not really good for taking them out, and there's multiple reasons. One of them is that they're open back, so you, yeah, any, any noise outdoors um, will just make it impossible to enjoy any music with them, because they don't prevent you from hearing any of that. But there's other reasons which I'm going to get to in a moment. Actually, very, very near moment. Uh, so yeah, I've seen people made custom carry bags uh, for this. Maybe even like carry cases, I don't know. Um, I haven't done any of that. I've been carrying them around by disassembling them and reassembling them. You can see this on the on the Sonoy on his presentation when I show this around. But I'm going to demonstrate now, maybe. Let's see. Let's see if I'm if I can still do this. Right. So I unplugged the I unplugged the cables. So now putting this into your backpack is not a bad, good idea. Like this is gonna like lots of strain. This shape doesn't wanna like conform to anything. But to lay them flat, we need to like take them apart. How do we do that? Well, um, it just so happens that underneath here, there are two springs. Or rather, if I pull this out, now there is a latch. And if I press on this latch and pull, I can pull this out. Oh, you can see the latch now. Move we'll focus. Okay, there is the latch. So, if you just open it up all the way, let me show you more like this. All the way, clack, press here and pull. So, like, put your finger down here and press and pull. And, you know, for one of them, it's easy. For the other, it's ball-bustingly hard. And like, I bruised my my fingernail. Trying to do this. My thumbnail. Actually, I think I got a tool. I use that to push down this, uh, this little latch. And that worked, I think. Okay, I'm not going to do it now. 
because I think I'm. It's just gonna take too long. So you see, I mean that's one that's one problem that there is a little bit of mechanical inconsistency because you know one of these latches is is easy to to deal with, the other one is impossible. At least for me. Maybe you just I'm just built different. I don't know. Oh, okay, I managed. Oh man, hurt. All right, I freed it. All right. So now I have these three parts which is much easier to fit these this into your backpack but what i did is i put it into a bag and actually it's the same bag i got them in actually this is how they arrived in these three pieces the three pieces plus cables so this is it you add you add your cables, you add your DAC, and you're good to go. And then when you want to assemble them, let's do it again. I mean, this is how much assembly I had to do when, when they arrived. The headband is perfectly symmetrical, it doesn't matter which way. So just insert. Insert, and there you go. It took a little bit of force to insert one of these, I think, or like change it. I was a little bit afraid I'm gonna break something, but nothing did break. Right. And then you just play, plug in the cables. Okay. Right, so you can move them around like I put them in a backpack lied with them and said etc um but there is another reason why you don't want to use them outside and that's the quiet problem so the bluebee headphones have a one big issue that determines a lot about them and that is uh, where all the shortcomings of these headphones come from and that is they consume a lot of power this is why I think they needed the, the, the DAC in the first place is that they just wouldn't work if you just plug them into any normal headphone jack. So also they needed the DAC to use the EQ to actually balance the sound. But because they take so much power and I mean they can take upwards of one amp one amp at five volts <laughs> one amp going into your ears no actually it's not because you see they don't emit as much sound as one amp would suffice would suggest because they are they have very low sensitivity especially in the high frequencies uh, in the low frequencies they they are easier to drive so less less Voltage is required to push them around. They naturally are, have a, ver a very large resonance in the lower bass, like 50 hertz or 30, I think, I don't know. Which has some very interesting consequences because with the EQ, you can make them... The bass is crazy, it's awesome. <laughs> okay, I'm getting ahead of myself again. Right, so they consume a lot of power because they are inefficient. That's really it. And the amplifier slash digital analog converter slash equalizer box. It yeah, it runs on an overclocked Raspberry Pi microcontroller chip. And this box is always hot. If I have this plugged into my computer, it's always hot to the touch. I mean not not horrifyingly hot, but it's very warm, I would say. It's always very warm. Mm, one idea I had for a mod is to add a radiator to this chip. <laughs> I actually I actually bought tiny aluminium radiators that would fit, but I don't want to cut a hole into this, plus I don't have the tools 
don't want to uh, destroy this beautiful thing. All of this wooden logo of theirs. Really cool. You should see more of that in the B-roll, because I shot a lot of B-roll. Hopefully I'm using it now when I'm editing this. Right, so they can... They can take 5 watts of power, because 1 amp at 5 volts. It's... It's a lot. And I first found out when I started having issues where I would plug them in and listen to stuff and then I would turn up the volume and something loud would play and then they would like go silent. I unplug them, plug them in, they, they work again and something loud happens and they, they go silent again. Turned out they were shutting down because they had... they were getting not... they were getting too little power from the USB port I plugged them into, which was I believe a USB port on the front of my PC chassis. And, you know, these usually take a long road, so they don't carry that much power. So when I plugged them into the back of my computer, that problem went away. But it is always warm. So this is a hand warmer. Uh, you can just grab this. You're gonna have your hands be hotter. Oh. I wonder, I disconnected this as a device. Uh, I wonder if OBS that is recording things here did not get crazy about it. Oh no, I think it works. Perfect. Good. Wunderbar. Right. Uh, so, this is why you wouldn't want to use them with a phone or a tablet. They would just drain your battery real fast. I think I did try it a bit, and uh, no, no, no. I mean, you can't do it with a laptop. If you're not like you know constrained with um, battery life, and you're like you have a long-lasting battery or something, and then I think it's it's gonna be fine. I mean, I I left people with with my laptop plugged into the, these plugged into them, and they were testing it. It was on AC sometime, but not always. Like it was fine. But with a phone, not really a good idea. Unless you want to, like, carry on a power brick with you at all times. And that's not very handy, is it? Yeah, and this uh, this low sensitivity also causes a problem, which is, like, my only gripe with the sound quality. Have I talked about the sound quality yet? No. It's still a couple paragraphs later. I mean, actually, I hope... Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm still getting ahead of myself. <laughs> yeah. Um, they have a volume limit. Which is a bit lower than I would like. Um, basically, getting them to play stupidly loud is really hard. Unless you want to run a limiter before you send signal to them. For which you would actually need to... Okay. Yeah, so there's a, ridic there's a ridiculously silly way you could drive these headphones at ridiculous volumes, I think. Haven't tried it, but you would need to reproduce the, the necessary EQ curve in software of your choice. And you would need to apply that to the signal and then, I don't know, multiband limit it, do something to it, squash it. Then, disable the EQ in this little box and have it just push the, the raw audio. And then I think you could get the maximum volume out of that, but it would be with, like, you know, dynamic range compression. Without that, you, you can't really get stupid volumes. You're gonna get distortion and digital distortion of that. So you can get analog distortion as well. I, I I found a way to have them distort analog in, in an analog way, physically distort, which was also fun. Uh, I did some experiments with bespoke synth and oscillator and different frequencies and you know boosting the volume to ridiculous volumes and playing with DQ and bass and stuff. Oh, really fun thing. I highly recommend playing with that. It's these headphones are a lot of fun. 
to play with <laughs> this way. Uh, right, so I mean, these headphones can produce a lot of sound, um, but it might take some tweaking and you might hear some distortion when trying to achieve that. Uh, the simplest way to like go beyond 100% volume is like in KDE Plasma 6 or 5, there's an option to make the volume sliders go above 100% and then you go can go to 150%. I think this makes Pipewire just apply gain to the digital si signal before it gets sent out. Because otherwise I don't know how it would, would be done. I don't know if it applies any limiting or something, but... So that's the easy way to turn up things when it's there's too quiet. Because a big problem with this is like they don't have enough headroom. So if you turn things up too loud, they're gonna distort. So you really like need to turn things up, but then like, I don't know, in your system properties, like have things turned down. But this is also really, <laughs> this is also silly because of how the gain staging works. You see, because they like, you have a volume control in your system, right? What that does is it controls the analog gain stage in here, which is the last thing. You're tweaking analog gain with the volume control. This means that if you cause distortion in the digital domain first, you are not gonna get rid of that distortion by turning down the volume. <laughs> you get me? This is why it's stupid. I mean, I don't know really what what would be the the solution here. I mean, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe all gain staging should be done in digital and just leave the the the, the amplifier at full blast all the all times. I don't know. Of course, that would hurt fidelity because you have 16 bit audio, 16 bit audio here. I think you can like flash custom firmware, which makes it 24 bit. Don't quote me on that. I I don't remember. But of course, you would maybe hear a little bit of, like, noise floor if you turn things down very quietly at 16-bit. So, vinyl recordings have been pressed using 13-bit PCM and no one ever heard that. Partially because vinyl is noisy at this time. But partially because we really don't need that much fidelity to convey a lot. Musically. Okay, hot takes over. Uh, yeah, the the gain staging is a little bit puzzling. So actually what makes most sense, I think, is the KD Plasma's extra gain, because that must be applied to the digital audio, which means then the digital audio goes through the USB-C, then it gets processed with the DSP processor in their DSP code running on this Raspberry Pi overclocked microcontroller chip. Then there is like pre-gain, digital, digital pre-gain, EQ, all the filters are processed, and then there is post-gain after the EQ. It's a bit weird, you have pre- and post-gain, but both are actually happening in the digital domain, before the signal actually goes into the amplifier. So, if you go to the Ploopy Headphones toolbox, none of the sliders there at the top, called Gain, actually touch the amplifier part. <laughs> they touch <laughs> the digital processing part only. Oh, yeah. So you can get a lot of volume. It's tricky. Um, It's tricky. I would usually do it with the pre-amplifier gain. So I have a, I have some presets. One is called even louder. And what I do is I have actually have EQ post gain at maximum plus nine decibels. EQ pre gain at negative two. The default preset is negative four point one on pre gain. 
on pre-EQ gain and 3 decibels at post-EQ gain. I don't touch the EQ curve at all, though. I have a preset called Extra Bass, though, where I also add... 18 decibels at 24 hertz. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's really fun. Right, so gain staging is, is a little bit of a problem. Because if you turn turn up the pre-EQ gain staging too much, you're going to have everything distorted. And then what you need to do is turn down the source, the digital source. Like if you're playing a video on YouTube or a music track on YouTube or, or in your browser or anything, you need to turn down in the player. Not in the system control, because the system control is only doing it after the distortion already happened. Uh, so, so really the really the system volume control is only there to turn things down that are nice and loud, but could be a little bit quieter. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of weird. It takes some time to to like get the feel for it and figure it out, but I I got to feel comfortable with it, and I'm fine. I'm using them. I like them. Oh, the chip is called Raspberry Pi 2040, by the way. They even say that in the Bluepy Headphones toolbox. And there's a PCM3060 codec chip by Texas Instruments used digital to L converter. Yep, and there's some extra configuration like oversampling. Crazy stuff. Wicked crazy stuff. I mean, if you're a tinkerer, if you're an audio person, like I guess most people who view my channel are interested in audio in some way, making music, probably. Yeah, they are they are fun. <sighs> All right, I think I've explained the, the problem. So yeah, and because of their like uh, natural EQ response, they have this resonance in the bass, and they have throths in the in the higher upper mids and high frequencies or lower highs. Um, because of that, the default EQ reduces bass and boosts our highs. And like remember, all of this stuff happens in a fixed point, you know, 16-bit integer audio stream. We are taking the bass out, but boosting highs. And if we're gonna boost the bass a lot, we can start pushing the highs, the peaks of highs, into distortion territory. And unfortunately, it's gonna be nasty digital clipping distortion. Not gonna be soft, warm, um, soft clipping, unfortunately, because it's not happening in the analog domain. <clears throat> Ideally, we would build a limiter pass into the firmware. You know, this is open source. You can do that. You can take this thing and figure out how to make it gain without clipping to get more volume i don't know they they squeezed quite a lot of out of this chip and they're, they're really pushing it hard and they have like 15 gain oh sorry 15 bands of eq parametric eq you can even do like custom filters like entering some coefficients or something like it's dangerous i don't touch this I, i'm told you can blast your ears off if you not if you're not careful with that. So you might think, okay, so the headphones are a little bit quiet, is that it? Well, kind of yes. But it's a bit more nuanced. Like I've I've found that it's a really difficult problem to solve. This is actually really freaking difficult. <laughs> Turns out designing headphones is hard as heck. And uh, this is my speculation, but 
I think that maybe we don't see open source headphones more. I haven't seen any at least. Is because companies that did invest in research and development to to design headphones that are like highly sensitive and have a flat like a de desirable response and stuff. Uh, they don't want to share that information because it it's difficult to obtain and very costly to obtain. But you know we have the first pair of open source headphones, and what I hope is we're gonna see crazy ideas from the community iterating on this design, you know, printing different parts, modifying the software that runs on the on the DAC, doing crazy things. I don't know. These are the these are definitely fun for tinkerers. Um, if you're not a tinkerer, you you probably will find their limitations very frustrating. If you happen to like hit them, because you might not never hit it, you might never actually feel like oh I can't turn them up enough. Maybe you're never gonna happen. Maybe it's never gonna happen to you. It does happen to me. Sometimes there's a like a YouTube video where someone talks and it's just not mastered properly and it's very quiet and I can't turn it up enough. But I found ways. I made some presets. Um, maybe I'll share the presets on on Codeberg or something. These are JSON files. You can load into the Bloopy Headphones toolbox and have an EQ curve that someone else made. So yeah, uh, it's really hard to make this headphones sensitive. Bloopy have found a solution. They built a DAC, a dedicated amplifier with a dedicated Q, to make the frequency response as good as possible, and it's exceptional. But it also comes at a cost. It They take a lot of power. They're not efficient. And they can't go as hot as maybe you'd want to at times. But the bass absolutely can. Is, is that problem a deal breaker? It's hard to tell because I didn't pay for them. I'm paying for them with my hard work doing this video. Or maybe I already did pay. I don't know. I don't know if you, I don't even know if Ploopy like thinks I, I owe them this video. I think I owe them this video. I promised them this video, so I'm making it um, after half a year. Maybe it's better. Maybe I learned a lot about these headphones. I don't know. Um, yeah, I I think there. This is it's it's a it's a it's an issue. It's a big one. It's something we can't jump over easily. But they're still really cool and really fun, and I I don't think it really like makes them not worth checking out or trying or using. After you like learn how to wrestle with it, how to like deal with that loudness volume issue you'll be fine okay there's one more issue i want to talk about before we go into sound quality and it's a it's a thing unrelated to the to the thing I, I said previously the issue i want to talk about is about the cable so let's try to do this without Tipping over any thing. So, um, you get a cable with like two ends. Each of this plugs into one of the headphones. You can actually find these are a little bit off center. They are a little bit bent. But there is a, a, a little rubber thing that. Um, Make sure this braiding isn't like putting tension on, on this. And that's good. That's good. The problem is this cable needed something like that on the other end as well. Let me show you. Oh man, I have such a mess on my desk. Oh, 
I did not prepare to do that. Did I? Okay, there we go. Right, so the other end of this cable, it's also twisted, right? But if by default this thing was not there and this braiding came over here and it was doing it was doing things like that all the time and it deformed these these plugs <laughs> i realized this when i heard some crackling sometime and i lost sound in one of the one of the headphones and i was like oh what the heck i Played around, rotated this a bit, and I found, oh, is the connector. If I unplug this, you will see that they are indeed crooked. See? They aren't straight. So what I found is needed is just clamping this cable here, like or like tying it together so that the the spirally thingy double helix isn't putting tension on these connectors after i did that the thing stopped really bothering me also a funny little detail in the headphones toolbox there is an option at the top called reverse stereo and it's checked on by default and this is because they they made a mistake when soldering something i think or when designing something some connector or i don't know if they like soldered channels left and right in like in reverse in here or something something silly like that so yeah that was fixed in software <coughs> which is really funny uh, yeah, by the way, you are advised to never plug anything into this DAC other than the Ploopy headphones. And I think it's because this feeds unusually high volume voltage and different and probably, yeah. I think it will burn anything if you plug it in. Like, if you try to run, like, if I plug these cloud, HyperX clouds too into this DAC, and then turn up the volume, I think I would burn these. Right. Now I'm gonna need to test which one is left or right, because I don't have the cables marked. And uh, they are all this identical. It's not like one is has blue, one is has yellow things or green. Uh, I'll need to just check the volume. I think it's reverse. Maybe not. I'll check it later. Right. So I'm coming closer and closer to a conclusion of this video and that is yeah so if you get these headphones make sure to clamp the cable on the other end so it doesn't strain the connectors bend them break them okay right let's talk about sound quality so note that i'm not an audiophile I don't claim to have golden ears. I know my limitations. I know I can't hear crap above 16k. Above 15k if it's really loud. So, you know, I'm 33? Maybe I'm 34. I don't know. I never remember. I always like, I'm off by a year. I, I'm, I'm definitely not 32 still. I'm 32, 33 probably. So, um,. Yeah, um, I do have a very good musical hearing that was measured objectively. I I think I have an okay technical hearing, but I have a friend who has like he he's completely musically deaf, but technically hear his technical hearing is incredible, and I think he he's one of the few people who could maybe hear up to 19 kilohertz or maybe 20 even. He hears things that I am not uh, able to perceive at all. So, I also don't own like a huge library of a collection of expensive headphone sets to, you know, test and compare to. What I do have is years of experience using Audio Technica 50XBTs until they broke. 
these were good while they lasted, but they fell off my head one too many times and broke a hinge. And I'm told it's not repairable. There are no spare parts. So I'm sad. I'm still not sure what to do with them, but I mean, they're kind of usable. Actually, the hot glue made them usable, but I also started wearing glasses. And it doesn't really work well. Actually, glasses are a really difficult thing. You can't really wear clothes like headphones, like because they also need to clamp. I don't know, it's difficult. Challenges, man. Right. Uh another piece of kit I'm using. The HyperX Cloud 2 headphones. I think they're exceptionally good for for their price. Uh, really? Um, they are not terribly expensive. Of course, they are like... It, only, it never depends on what would you think is expensive about headphones, but if you're interested in music production, you probably have a little bit of a more budget than, you know, like $5 for headphones. Because they are on $5. And the other piece of kit I'm using is Behringer's Next K8 monitors. A pair of them. I've been using them for, man, how long? Like eight years, nine, maybe a decade now. Woo! I think they're really, really, really nice. I also worked a little bit of, on Rockets, five, five inch Rockets, R5 or whatever I want to call it. And the guy. The guy who founded KRK, he also like designed these monitors for Behringer. And I think they sound excellent. So that's my reference. I have lots of experience producing music. I have lots of experience sound designing sound. I'm professionally doing some of that. Um, yeah, and I think this Ploopy headphones sound really good. I don't have any issues with them other than the volume and the clipping, which can sometimes happen because of the volume. But the sound, I think, is exceptionally good. I think they, you know, I might be hallucinating. I'm also totally biased. But I think that when I started, like, listening to, to music on them, I started realizing things like small details that I haven't seen before. It's like, it's like someone gave me glasses and like things that were kind of blurry and like blended together. I put them on and suddenly like I felt like I can actually tell what's there. And that was a nice feeling. Is a nice feeling. Also, they have a very nice bass which goes deep and it's it feels very like punchy but soft and very well controlled. So when you plug them in, there is a little click and the the bass is ringing. You can hear like a little bit of a, you know, aftermath of that click. But that's because the click is not going for the EQ. It's an analog pulse that's just probably released from the DAC or the amplifier when they power on. So that is the like the, the raw um, frequency response of the headphones ringing out, but that's not happening when I listen to music on them or anything else. Uh, the bass doesn't ring, like I don't hear like a cascading bass tone after things, like it sounds well controlled. Um, I also think the stereo field is... somehow it feels wider. I don't know why. People tell me it's because of their own... because they are open back. And I don't really use open back headphones much. I mean, I haven't used open back headphones before I um, started using these. Well, the last open back headphones I actually used were. Where are they? Oh no, they're not here. <sighs> the Porta Pros. That was the last pair of open back headphones <laughs> I've actually used. I I bought them specifically for wearing them under a biking helmet. <laughs> and I, like, 
blasted drone based to going to work at like 6 a.m. Oh man, that was incredible. I'm, incredible memories. I'm happy I'm not there anymore. Yeah. So, and also, like, these are the first planner magnetic drivers I've ever listened to. All the headphones I have are standard coil drivers, like, coil as in a coil. <laughs> I don't know. If you look up planner headphones, planner as in plane, you will find why. Uh, I think they sound very good. I don't really have any complaints. I like the I like the sound. I like the bass. I like how crazy the bass can be if you play with the EQ. Really fun, really fun stuff. I don't think there are any other headphones on the market that can give you uh, an experience like as if you're like attending a live concert or like and standing neck, you know, near the stage and. Because you, when you just give 20 decibel gain to like 20 hertz, let that roll off, you know? A bell curve. They start dancing on your head. You're almost feeling it in your chest. <laughs> That's my sensation, at least. And it, like, I start, I've been listening to, to some, you know, EDM bangers this way. It's so much fun, you know? Really, I... Uh, that's that's incredible. I don't think there's a lot of headphones that could give this experience. Uh, and I think it's uh, this thing alone might be worth the money if you, you know, if you're kind of person that likes this kind of interesting experiences and novelty. If that's not your thing, I think there's still solid headphones. Very interesting. They have this limitation of volume. It might or might not be a problem for you. I think a lot of people might not discover even that there is a limitation. But I've seen people complain about that, and I did complain myself, and we talked about this, why and how and what. Yeah, so it just turns out the, the amplifier in the DAC box is just maxed out. Uh, the chip just can't can't produce more power. <clears throat> so yeah, the only the only way to to really squeeze more volume would be to implement a limiter after the EQ in the DAC. But I have no idea how to program in I don't know what it's C. Assembly? I don't know. No, I think C. And I would not dare put put on my head stuff that I programmed and like expect. But yeah. People are lost hearing because of Dragonfly reverb bugs. I don't want to, you know, add any more of that to the world. Rip. Let's talk about cost. The pre-assembled kit costs 255 Canadian dollars. The pre-assembled kit is what I got. That go that is translates roughly to 189 US dollars and 173 euro at as of today. And the kit for self-assembly, where you solder all, all the pieces, um, you, you you build the DAC board yourself from you know components and stuff, that costs a uh, hundred and thirty-five Canadian dollars. So 255 Canadian dollars versus 135, like quite a substantial difference. It's it's like 80% cheaper or something. I don't know. Um, and that would translate to 115 US dollars or 105 euros. So around 100 euros, you can get the assembly kit if you are a DIY electronics person. Excluding shipping from Canada. So yeah, if you're abroad, you need to factor in shipping cost, and you know the base price is in Canadian coins, so uh, things might change because stonks. Mm, are the headphones worth the money? 
Testimonials I've read online say that, yeah, they're actually a very good deal for the sound quality. And the source for that is that um, up to like, I think like the cheaper, the cheapest planner magnetic driver headphones right now are like $400 or something. Or at least they were six months ago when I was doing research or more. But it's like the, it's like a very new thing that they're so cheap. And the next thing is like a hundred, a thousand dollars, US dollars. So and there were I've I've read people who were like, um, they were like testing, comparing these the headphones like that costed you know, thousand dollars or like twenty twenty thousand dollars or thirty thousand dollars, and comparing them to loopies and they. They gave very favorable reviews, which I think is quite insane. And you know the the shortcoming of the of the of the volume, and that they they need their own power, uh, they they need their own brick. I think it's a it's a worthy. Suck, uh, if you want planar magnetic driver headphones, this is the cheapest way you can get them, I think. If that's your thing. I didn't know it, it it was a thing until I learned about these. I have no idea, you know, how 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 does work differently. I don't know. I just like their sound. They're really cool. So I suppose they are very much worth it for the sound. I can't judge it. I'm not an audiophile. Not even close. <sighs> yeah. And that is that is all I have for you today. I think Ploopy is a really cool company. I've been talking to the guys, uh, mainly Phil, who was like my contact for for this whole this whole thing. I'm really thankful that they sent me the headphones and that I could do do a video about them. I did the short that was like six months ago. Now I'm doing the review. I'm kind of sad that I can't really do this review like better technically because I just can't afford to spend, you know, a month editing this video. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think I think this is a very interesting product to check out. And also like they have all their mice and trackballs and keyboards, so you might find something else that they make that you also like. Who knows? Check them out at loopy.co. Yeah, thanks for watching. Take care. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Holy crap. This took longer than I expected. My, my memory card is not full yet. <laughs> Whoa, this thing is hot. Whoa, this light is hot. Lots of watts. Lots of watts. <laughs> oh, I could record videos like this. Welcome in the Alpha Cave. No, I tried to do this with a teleprompter, which I made out of cardboard. It didn't work out because I don't have a transparent enough plastic sheet.